Everybody wants to access Home Assistant remotely. Switch on the heating before they get home so it's nice and warm. Switch stuff off so they don't leave things running. Make sure the lights go on off so nobody gets burgled. And numerous other reasons. So, let's roll the credits and find out how we can do it. I'm going to set a scene. So let's imagine your house. It's got a router. This is a wireless one, but it could be with wireless switched off and having access points. Or it could be just the one that you've got from BT or TalkTalk Talk or wherever your provider name is. The router talks to the internet and it might use full fiber or ADSL or wireless or satellite or two bits of two, bit, two tin cans with a bit of string on the end. And that's how it talks to the internet. Your provider will give you an external or public internet address. If you're lucky, they'll fix it for you, so you always have the same address, which is quite useful. With your router, you get a firewall. So let's add the firewall. That protects you from the bad things on the internet. On your side of the firewall, you've got local IP addresses, normally 192.168.1. something. If you want to know more about public and private IP addresses, I've done a video on that. There's a link up here. So let's add our stuff in. Uh, our home assistant server. Look, I've got a nice NUT PC. That's exciting, isn't it? I've got my laptop. I've got my mobile phone. I could have a tablet. I could have lots of stuff. It all works because they're all on the 192.168.1 network. Um, my server is on 192.168.1.155 port 8123. All is happy, I can come out on my network line. The problem comes when I try and use my laptop out here on the internet. So what problems do we actually have? I've got three, it's probably more than that, but three main ones. Um, where is your house in IP speak? If it's on a fixed IP address, 101.53.160.37, as in my example, you know where it is. If it's not a fixed IP address, it could be anywhere. It's also not got a name, so we'd have to remember 101.53, etc. Um, it's also not secure. When you commu communicate with Home Assistant, it's actually a web server. And a web server is we can communicate on HTTP and HTTPS. The S at the start and the end stands for secure. It means the data has been encrypted. When it's not been encrypted, it's just plain text. Anybody can read it. You often see a padlock uh, next to the address when it's got an HTTPS address. I don't think at home um, you'll need to worry that your missus might sniff network traffic and try and steal your passwords. But when you're on the internet in the big wide world, HTTPS is a very good idea. So, how can we talk from the internet? Well, let's start with way one. It's not the recommended way, and I'm going to call it Duck DNS and Let's Encrypt. Duck DNS and Let's Encrypt are services on the internet, so let's put them on the internet, and add-ons for home assistance. And what we need to do is we need to go to DuckDNS and register a domain name. Now the domain name has to end in DuckDNS.org. So I would probably register www.duckdns.org. The DuckDNS add-on on my server then talks to the DuckDNS server out on the internet and tells it what the IP address on the public internet address is the 101.53.160.37 number. And when the IP address changes, the add-on will tell the internet it's changed and be able to kind of talk to me still. So that's one thing that we can do. The next thing is Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt creates certificates and certificates are the way 
of creating HTTPS. So what it does is it takes your DNS name, www.duckdns.org, and it'll create a certificate. And it's all done on your home assistant server, so you've got a certificate, so things are secure. The last thing we need to do is drill through the firewall because we want to be able to communicate. So we get a drill and we drill a hole through. As well as drilling the hole through, we have to tell the firewall where to send things. So when it comes in on the HTTPS, on 101.53.160.37, we need to send it to our home assistant server, 192.168.1.155.8123, so it knows how to talk. So that's one way of doing things. Not really recommended because as beginners it's not a good idea to make holes in your firewall. It, it means that you're revealing what your IP address is. There's lots of reasons why you shouldn't do it this way. It is possible. It doesn't cost anything. It can work. Okay, let's remove duck DNS and let's encrypt from our house and talk about the first type of VPN, a complete VPN. This is what you can do with Tailscale. All the devices you want to talk to your server, you have to install Tailscale on all of them. So next, to connect to Tailscale, you need a username and password and kind of security like that. What Tailscale does is create a network just for you, a virtual private network. It builds a fence around your server, around your laptop, around your mobile phone, so only you can access it. It also creates a DNS record, so you haven't got to remember the numbers and sorts out all the IP addresses and stuff like that. So it's very secure and protects your information. Okay, let's remove tail scale and we'll talk about endpoint VPNs. There's lots of these that you can connect to Home Assistant on your homeland. Uh, things like WireGuard, and the majority of the more powerful routers will allow you to connect to them with as a VPN. What does it work like? Well, when you connect up to your VPN, it's like your computer has been moved into your home network. It's really easy to explain that way. Your computer's just on your home network. But it's a little bit more complicated to set up, mainly because you have to sort out the security to make sure that only the right things come through and how you're doing it and what certificates and all the interesting stuff like that. It's very good, it works. Um, so that's endpoint VPNs. The last type I'm going to talk about are tunnels or pipes. Uh, let's remove the uh, endpoint VPNs first of all. So what we're going to talk about is a thing called Cloudflare and also uh, Home Assistance Nambu, Nambu Kasla, uh, the thing that costs £65 a year, is also a tunnel. It's a bit more than a tunnel because it does a lot more than it. I'm going to be doing a separate video on Nambu Kasla, so make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss that one. So tunnels, I'm going to talk about Cloudflare. For Cloudflare you need a domain name and it needs to be looked after by Cloudflare. Uh, you also need to install the Cloudflare add-on. Uh, on your Home Assistant server. So let's just add those things. So how does it work? Well, it's exactly as it's described. You create a tunnel from Cloudflare to your home and into your Home Assistant and it communication goes all over that tunnel. Um, as well as providing the tunnel, Cloudflare can add some security. So by default it'll add an HTTPS certificate, nice and secure. It can also add IP location blocking, so only allow addresses from certain countries, so the UK or the US or wherever. You can also add extra things like two-factor authentication, things like that. The only problem with it is you have to buy a domain name, which six dollars, uh, six pounds a year is the price on that, and it's just connecting up. Right, that's it for today. Um, as I said, I'm going to be creating uh, videos on all these methods, um, but there's no real hard and force fast rule here. You can mix and match, you can duplicate, you can have Duck DNS and Cloudflare, or a combination of all of them if you really wanted to. So, 
Uh, if you could like and like and subscribe, that would be great because it really does help. And I'll see you on the next one.